Second day in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region is now now commencing. Good morning. I'm the MC. Chen Chen. Hi. This is the other MC, Wang Yuan. Now let's welcome all the officiating guests to enter the stage. Please be seated. Dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, today we are honored to have the presence of Mr. Xia Baolong, Director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office of the State Council, Mr. Zhou Ji, Executive Dep Deputy Director of Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, Mr. Wang Lingui, Deputy Director, Mr. Nong Rong, Deputy Directors, as well as all the members of Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, Directors of various departments and senior officials above the departmental level, and today, Mr. Xia Baolong will serve as a distinguished guest of the honor and deliver the keynote address at the opening ceremony. Okay. Mr. John Ni, Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Star Government. And Hong Kong, the central government's Hong Kong liaison's officers, director, and Ms., uh, Mr. Chen Yang Hong and Mr. Dong Jingwei of the central government's Hong Kong staff uh, committee on national security, and Mr. Nei Wing Sing. The PRC Foreign Ministries Hong Kong Star um, Special Commissioner and also General, uh, Major General Wang Xiaobing. Please stand. Let us sing the national anthem. Please be seated. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. 
welcome to the opening ceremony of the 2024 National Security Education Day hosted by the Committee for Safeguarding National Security of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region with the support of the Liaise Office of the Central People's Government in the Hong Kong SAR and the Office for Safeguarding National Security of the Central People's Government in the Hong Kong SAR. Yao 总体国家安全观国家安全well, the security of nation and the security of Hong Kong. So, may we have the performance? Oh, 
thank you for the performance. Uh, thank you for the wonderful performance. Today is the a special year, a very important year of the SAR government in maintaining national security and perform, putting into practice the work because it's um, the first national security education day after the Hong Kong SAR has accomplished its mission under Article 23 of the Basic Law. And that's completing the legal safeguarding of Hong Kong and national security. So it is also the first national security education day after the safeguarding national security ordinance took effect. Basic Law 23rd. in Hong Kong. We waited 26 years, 8 months and 19 days. Hi. And it is a proud moment for Hong Kong staff to join the composed the new page on national security. We finally have put into completed the mission of given to us by history and realizing our duties to the nation. The government will maintain and further develop the eighth hub positioning of Hong Kong to ensure that the competitiveness and economic development of Hong Kong will continue. We will further under the one country, two system and utilize and take advantage of our advantage of being backed by the nation and facing the world to find new opportunities. And one of our direction that we strive to do is to promote Hong Kong economy by bringing a diversity of fun and exciting events to enrich people's life, to safeguard national security, to a more prosperous and better family and home for all. Next is for speech. Let's invite. Next is the speech by the uh, officiating guest. First of all, Mr. Xia Baolong, Director of the Central Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office and Director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office of the State Council. Let's invite him for a uh, keynote speech.
The Chief Executive Li Jiachao, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today is the ninth National Security Day. I'm very pleasured to be connected to this conference via video. Mr. Xi has presented before uh, the national security for the national security policy has issued for over a decade. So he has already mentioned it's critical for us to enhance our power to in enhance and make sure that we will enjoy a stable country. And this is critical for us to stay stable and continuous development for Hong Kong and Macau area. Mr. Xi has revealed the mission that we should have in the region in order to enhance Hong Kong and Macau's development to a further development, he has offered the basic principle and strategy for us. This year, on March 19th, is a very memorable day because Hong Kong SAR has issued the national policy, and uh, this policy has be conducted on March 20th. So the Hong Kong government, together with the public, has accomplished this historical achievement. This is a milestone and a big event for the further development of Hong Kong to Macau region. This has further enhanced the legal protection of the region to make sure it has perpetual development. This has, has in this has a deep influence for the future events. Now to nowadays, Hong Kong has say, said goodbye to the chaoses. Now today, Hong Kong has made sure that we have developed the economy under the strategy, the national security strategy and policy, and the public will conduct this work further on the such devel development under such policy. And this we are welcoming the best era for Hong Kong for this further development. We would like to make sure that we can push Hong Kong forward to make it further developed and to lead it to the bright future. And this is the principle, the critical mission of Hong Kong. Standing at this point, we would like to reveal the new chapter of Hong Kong history. Make sure that a parole such as Hong Kong for its further development. Our work is not finished yet. And we cannot wait for the achievement to happen naturally. We should push forward continuously the development of Hong Kong under the One Nation, Two Policies policy. We would like to make sure that we have the deadline and set stone for Hong Kong to first make sure we can make the Hong Kong a secure and safe place. The incident happened before here was a pain. We feel sorry for what happened to Hong Kong and we feel like we should not witness the chaos that happened before. After the 70 years of reunion to the mainland China, Hong Kong has realized that a national security policy is to protect Hong Kong for its further development for the public and for the further development of the economy. For those who would damage the security, the safety of Hong Kong, 
we should pay close attention to them. And making the law set is the fundamental thing we should we can do for the public in Hong Kong and the citizens in Hong Kong. We would like to open the door of Hong Kong and welcome the friends to join us. Now, it's like we have set the top-notch security equipment for Hong Kong, making sure that all the friends and guests will be protected. Hong Kong has revealed it's more open, more welcoming, a more front, a more business-friendly area, welcoming all the potential investors to come into Hong Kong. After the first day of the national security policy has been issued, there will be some more. There will be there was seven, fifty-seven businesses to join to do business in Hong Kong. So more. Enterprise, uh, more businesses and corporations have rushed into Hong Kong after feeling secured. Words, actions speak louder than words. Hong Kong is still the best place and area for all the business to perish to for their developed around the world. It's like the sun in the universe. The clouds cannot block his lights. It's not that we can only develop the agriculture that we can make sure that for the development of Hong Kong, we should make sure that it's protected. For those who, who and uh, we would like to make sure, and uh, I'm sure that there is a bright future for Hong Kong. Secondly, we should make sure that one nation, two policies will be further conducted, and it's pr it protected the further development of Hong Kong. This is the advantages for Hong Kong. The reason why Hong Kong is developing nowadays after witnessing all the chaos is it's because the one nation, two policies. This, most of people and people are more and more cons confirmed that it's the best for Hong Kong and to make sure for the development of Hong Kong. We have never be uncertain of the policy. Mr. C has already emphasized. We need to do two things. The first is to make sure that we cannot make the policy unstable. Secondly, we should make sure that it's conducted from top to down without changes. Now we haven't we we did not change. We will not change in the future of such policy. This will make sure that our lifestyle in Hong Kong and the business environment won't be changed, and the legal protection enforcement will not be changed. The capital shall flow freely, and the nationality and the business cooperation should be further developed under such policy. Hong Kong still enjoys the big power behind it and also welcome, welcoming and facing the world. It becomes a bridge and window for the uh, national cooperation to protect the one nation, two policies. We are making sure a stable development of the region and we are certain that the bright future is guaranteed. Once Hong Kong requires anything, 
our mainland China and uh, nation will help our central government provides full support for Hong Kong to make sure that we have welcoming policies to make Hong Kong society a stable place and prosperous place. We would like to take the advantages of all the set it, of the set regulations here and to look forward for a bright future. Thirdly, we will like to enhance and make sure that we have still this brand, which is Hong Kong, to make this brand even brighter and even more prestigious. During the year, over, over the last past years, Hong Kong has developed into one of the best free market in the global arena. It's one of the most open, welcoming, good place for businesses around the world. It's one of the best economy centers. It's one of the best banking center. It's the hub for the exchange and uh, trades. There are more than a decade of trading companies, world trade companies. It's one of the busiest air hub for the world. It's one of the best hub for the global trade not only via air or by uh, via via ship, and it connects over 460 countries around the world for the logistics. It's one of the it's the only place in mainland China to conduct the general legal system. It's one of the safest city among the world. The criminal ratio is stays low continuously. The healthcare is the healthcare system is one of the best, and the uh, lifespan of the public is one of the top on the list. All of these advantages and uh, previous achievements is very special. And this is one of the reasons why Hong Kong can in see a bright future. From order to greater prosperity, it will reinforce Hong Kong's advantage and improve our international competitiveness. Our traditional advantage is not unchanged. Our key advantage cannot be kept forever, of course. Hong Kong's unique position is developed over the course of development. And of course, we need to reinforce and improve our strengths. We need to change according to time, like a wise person. An enterprise growth, an industry's development, a region's development must be in accordance with the trend. To We must act in accordance with the trend. That's the foundation of our long-term growth. Talents are the very important factor, so as technology and innovation. The new round innovation and industry disruption is cultivating new talents. So technology innovation will cultivate high effective, high quality, advanced manufacturing so we need to catch the new, new, we need to meet the new demand brought by the new trend. We need to develop green finance, digital economy, 
and establish regional trade center and to force a high quality maritime industry and to forge smart ports. We need to give full play to our traditional industry and pull them into the high quality development of the region. And with our advantage market trades, we need to selectively push new industry, new trend, and new growth engine to forge our new competitive edge. An impetus to Hong Kong's development from order to prosperity is not an isolated way. It's based on our great nation and our national rejuvenation. At this moment, our country is developing and we are pu pu pushing forward Chinese modernization. We contributed more than 30% in terms of productivity. After so many challenges and difficulties, we came to where we are now. In the past, we didn't collapse, and now it won't because of Hong Kong because of any theory or any capacity excessive. These won't cause any problem either. Uh, China's future is prosperous and bright. A bright Chinese development is a positive growth and also the largest foundation for Hong Kong's growth. Hong Kong's integration into our nation's development, that means we need to integrate into such a vast territory. That means we need to integrate into 1.4 billion people's market. That means we need to integrate into the numerous prosperities brought by such a large market, embracing the whole world. It will give us more strength to Hong Kong's development, reinforce our advantage, give fuller play to our existing position. With a 14th five-year plan going forward, and also a high-quality Belt and Road Initiative, innovation driving development, and talent big country. With so many great initiatives, Hong Kong's integration into China is going to a fast track. We will integrate into our national plan, including the Greater Bay Area Initiative, GBA in 2023, our economy broke through 140 million, exceeding a lot of big economies. It will become one of the four Bay Areas in the region. Jim is accelerating and pushing it into a deeper and deeper dive into it. We need to push forward. He Tao, Tianhai, Nanshan cooperation platforms, deepen infrastructure, and accelerating goods, people, technology, data, and all the other free flow. And we need to connect the systems as well. We need to faster the two way investment and cooperation to facilitate the exchange for people living in this region to to overcome the difficulties brought by supply chains and to perfect our supply chains, economy, side, etc. so as we can give a new face to Hong Kong's development. Fifth, from order to prosperity, we need to face the new challenges head to head. As an innovation city, we need to realize a new leap forward. At the moment, we're seeing immense changes. From order to prosperity in Hong Kong, it's also changing rapidly. Time is changing, landscape is changing, market structure, consumption pattern, everything is changing. At this time, China is different from what we were yesterday. Today's world is also different from what it was yesterday. So we need to get accustomed to the new trends and keep up with the pace. We need to recognize 
and you know catch up with all the all the changes to open a new chapter for Hong Kong's development from order to prosperity. Basically speaking, it's actually a path of changes. We cannot use yesterday's method or opinion to view today's matter. We cannot use yesterday's thinking to cope today's difficulties. We need to unite together and look forward, use new thinkings, new methodologies, new paths to solve what we are facing now. We need to be brave to say things that wasn't said before, do things that wasn't done before, and to break the new frontier, be, bro be bold, make new breakthroughs, and to upgrade Hong Kong's development. To realize from order to prosperity, it is a task shared by all the Hong Kong people. We believe the chief executive and Hong Kong government as the person in charge, they will bring high quality development as a priority. They will of course, hold dear to the task and to push Hong Kong from order to prosperity. We believe all the entrepreneurs and representatives from industry will agree with us. They will also catch the opportunities and continuously to spur the motive of new innovation, new industry, new more norms, break into new industries. We believe people from all walks of life will try their very best. We will work together to build Hong Kong as our family. They will actually contribute their themselves to push Hong Kong from order to prosperity. We believe young people will act what they learn from book together with what they learn from work. They will chase their dreams, they will work hard, and to write a new chapter in their life. We look back throughout the history, through each cycle, Hong Kong people can always catch opportunities amidst difficulties to bring through new development miracles. Times after times, Hong Kong rises from ashes. And today, when we are going from order to prosperity, no matter what hurdle or obstacle is ahead, are ahead, it won't stop Hong Kong from going forward. We will give full play to our Lion Rock spirit and flexibly handle the situation. We will work hard and continue to write the new legend of Hong Kong's book and to co-create a better life. Mr. Zhang Li, ladies and gentlemen, friends, today's Hong Kong is using a more open manner. We are welcoming all the investors and friends from all over the world. We are also the strong support for Chinese government. With the support of Chinese government, Hong Kong people, so Hong Kong's order to prosperity is prosperous, bright, and we believe the new train that is called Hong Kong, it must go through fastly, smoothly, and unstoppably. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Xia. Please be seated. Thank you for the excellent speech. And now may we have the Chairman of the National Security Committee and Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Saw, Mr. Zhong Li, to address the keynote speech. May we invite Mr. Zhong Li to stage.
who is better, Mr. Sha, and Mr. Zhang, Mr. Dong, Mr. Li, Mr. Wong, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, this year is actually the 10th year after Mr. Xi proposed the Comprehensive National Security, and it's also the first National Security Education Day after Hong Kong approving our national security law. It's very historic. After hearing Mr. Xia's keynote speech, I was impressed and inspired. Mr. Xia, you have concerned so much about Hong Kong, and thank you so much. I appreciate it. Today's theme is Holistic National Security Outlook 10th Anniversary. Holistic National Security is a guiding principle and strategy for national security. It's a very logical, interwined, coordinated, and safe mechanism covering traditional security, for example, military land safety, and non-traditional side, for example, economy, finance, and culture, and social aspects covering 20 aspects. They are interwined. It's our country's new trend to the changing challenges to safeguard national security, to prevent any risk, to safeguard the national security. These provide some guiding rules. And Hong Kong, after 2019 social movement and other painful events, international forces are still looking at Hong Kong. At the time of national security's approvals, fourth anniversary, and after it's taking effect in March, we must establish safeguarding national security. Security is the foundation for development. Development is also the foundation of our growth. It is our basic factor for development. It's an important cornerstone for our prosperity. Without national security, there won't be stable environment, and we cannot realize sustainable development. There are a lot of actions and things that may hinder or hurt national security. For example, large-scale chaos or movement or try to poke into military events or talking about key constructions or trying to evoke terrorist attacks. A lot of the events and actions, activities, they are very destructive and they may cause a lot of people's deaths and it will hurt our military forces. It will append the governance. It will affect a very chaotic way. Maker making the public suffer. So we should we should identify the the people that harming our Hong Kong society, and also make sure that we can act fast. Since in nineteen in the 2019 chaos, it has caused severe damage for the Hong Kong public and the society. Now, recently, the thing that happened in Moscow, the racist attack, causing 100 people's casualty, the damages that such events caused is beyond imagine. So we should fundamentally 
uh, ensure that we are in a secure place, not to be protect, not to be attacked because of a national status. So the some of the animist people, they would like to attract attacks to our society. It's not that we can stop the virus from attacking us just because we have vaccines. The same, the same reason applies to the national security. So such bad things will continue to attack us uh, like viruses. So we cannot forget the previous pain because of the current stableness and uh, Thirdly, the overseas foreigners might hide in different industries, and such spies could pr reveal themselves as civilians to get married and have children. And after years of undercover, they started to steal the national information and disappear. After Hong Kong's reunion to the mainland China for 20 years, for more than 20 years, and um, in this year, in March, we have actually issued the new regulations to protect Hong Kong's society, and it has the full support and all the promotions. We have waited for 26 years and eight months to a safety, a, a safe Hong Kong. But the national, the, the national challenge will continue even though we have such protection already. So we shall continue to make sure that we have such protections. So in the future, our government will uh, do this in four aspects in order to make sure that we have secure and safe Hong Kong. The first, we will like to continue for its explanations of the regulations to make sure that the public will understand the items of the regulations further, including to understand the national uh, principles. Uh, for this regulations, we make sure that we enhance the human rights. We are conducted this under the rule of law. And uh, also, we would like to for all the house all the bureaus and officials would actively regulate our inside builder, bureaus especially the inside training making sure that our staff understand the items and know the behaviors of violating our society could be tolerated and next the behaviors to to hurt our Hong Kong society is very severe and as crimin criminals. So we, may, we need to make sure that who are responsible and uh, who are responsible for taking for such power in a, within our bureau and then we ha so that we can effectively reduce such events or behaviors to prevent the spy behaviors and to prevent the uh, overseas spy to come into our system and make sure that we have a stable society. The last point is that we need to have this uh, national security education to be pro broadcasted further. We have this committee uh, will use different channels to promote our policies and regulations based on our culture background and history and to make sure that our public understands and appreciate the virtues of traditional China. So the society and the civilians would make sure that this is part of their normal daily life. And we promote that people should value and love our society in China. In on March 20th, 
where our policy is issued and conducted on that day. This further protect our Hong Kong, making sure that Hong Kong has no other burdens to push to march forward for a bright fe to a bright future and walking on a bright path on its full speed and tried its all best to work for the public and the Hong Kong people for a prosperous future. In the economy, economy and uh, development side, our government will push the five things. First, to further combine the government and the high and education system to combine together to benefit the local people. And we will like to attract more talents and uh, enterprises to bring more opportunities in the region and to try further to develop a, a hub that welcoming global businesses and to reduce the policies for people to make the business happen, to be business-friendly environment. And we have great achievements in this area. We will push all the big developments in these areas, including the Xintian uh, techno technology area, and also like the uh, university area to attract talents and to make more conductions and infrastructure building in the region, increasing jobs. The local government will set the goal and to make sure that we develop a society based on the, uh, the principles for example, airlines and uh, logistics and uh, international shipping systems and to cope with the international challenges and opportunities. We will make sure that we will further develop it, such as culture, cre creating industry, and to push forward the culture into making it marketalized not n not only in within Hong Kong but overseas to make sure that Hong Kong uh, a bright place secondly we will like to take advantages of our previous achievements in finance area in finance in banking in all the uh, and it's geological advantage to take all these advantages to push forward and to conduct our business under the policies and regulations to actively help to for the devel pro development and prosperous of the local businesses. And for example, we will like to try to support artificial intelligence, big data, and uh, for their structure construction and new technology, we will like to become the engine in such new green areas. We would like to also further our speed into developing the local super calculating industry to set up a center to push forward a more scientific achievements in this area. And we would like to push our our equal system in local Hong Kong and to cooperate with the international talents to review our advantages in these areas. We would like to set up an office, a data office here in Hong Kong and uh, the officer will try to we we'll try to manage the big data here in Hong Kong to push our work to be more uh, government work to be more efficient. And the third will lead to set up a talent highland. Since 
uh, February, we have pushed several regulations in order to attract talents from around the globe, including some of the policies to attract uh, top talents from mainland China and over the world. We have received more applications uh, than our cult, um, which reveals that our policy is really welcoming by the global talents. We would like to further develop the education and uh, making sure that uh, we can become the talent highland in the world. And we will intend to become the hub in this particular area. And um, we like to attract more talents, making sure that I can have positions like legitimate positions in the universities and high educations so that they can fit the need of the local businesses. We have set up the application of the science uh, such uh, a lab here in Hong Kong, making sure that we can make we can protect the talents and so that they can do their things research freely. We love talents. Our local government would like to nurture the talents, become its hub. Uh, we set up the different schools for talents and Hong Kong Talents School, Aviation School, Hong Kong, Wealth Perpetuals. So for different organizations, we'd like to continue our steps to attract talents. Fourthly, we would like to, we'd like to enhance our advantages and take advantages of our, our geological position facing the world with a uh, uh, mainland China behind to become the liaison and also the window and bridge for the world. We would like to, we would like uh, to attract leading corporations from around the globe and to further cooperate with all the regions and countries around the globe. We like to intend the leading managing hub for those businesses in, from mainland China, making sure that we can provide some support for them to march into the global market. And using our brand uh, that we have the uh, existed advantages in facing the world and the one and to make sure that we can further develop in based on the previous achievements. And uh, the big the big Bay Area, the Great Bay Area in Hong Kong would like to become to become the bridge between different regions and for the develop advantages uh, in policy making regulations and in businesses and to cooperate together with all the leaders in different from all walks of life and to cooperate actively with those different markets. Fifth, to develop our internal economy, including tourism, consumption, investment, and we will continue to support small and medium-sized enterprises. We will continue to expand international and mainland China tourism. Tourism board will host large international events to push forward our economy, to diversify tourism experiences, and to strengthen the market promotion to improve the tourism quality. And this year, the tourists that inv visited Hong Kong is estimated to be 50 million. And we estimate per 1.5 million tourists, it can bring 0.1% of GDP growth. In terms of improving internal consumption, 18 district in Hong Kong pushed forward our night markets. We are very happy to see 
different operators. For example, restaurants, local tourism. They realized consumption and demand shift, including Hong Kong people purchasing in mainland China and people who visit Hong Kong no longer pay more attention to consumption itself. They are chasing more for experiences, and also the quality is improving. We are strengthening our service and provide better consumption experience. The government will do our role to forge a platform and to push forward more events that are conductive to the development of dining and shopping. We will push forward for excellence. We believe for Hong Kong's spirit, we will, of course, come up with more flexible way, and we will bring up new competitiveness, dear guests. Improving the 23rd article of basic law, it's already filled the hole for national security, and it's very conductive to Hong Kong people's legitimate rights and freedom. It's very good for corporate investment confidence and to create an equal, transparent, and stable business operation environment. It is good to attract talents and to improve Hong Kong's economy st strength. And it's also helpful to the society's long-term development and people's happy life and their social welfare. It's helpful to get the opportunities, to tap into the opportunities. As long as we unite together and we work together, Hong Kong is bound to revive our past glory for a stronger China China's national rejuvenation, we can contribute our part. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Zhang Li, for your speech. Please be seated, Mr. Chief Executive. And once again, thank you, Mr. Xie, and all the liaison office, and all the colleagues in Beijing. Thank you so much for your support to today's event. And, and National Security Advisor to the Committee for Safeguarding National Security of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region to deliver his speech. Please welcome Mr. Jin. Distinguished Mr. Xia, Mr. Zhong Li, dear guests, friends, good morning. After proposing the holistic national security 10th anniversary, and at the time when we passed the Hong Kong national security law, Hong Kong government initiated this event, 2024 National Security Education Day. It has far-reaching significance and meaning. On behalf of national security, and also the liaison office of the Central People's Government in Hong Kong. I'd like to give show my sincere greetings and appreciation to all the people that are supportive to this initiative. On April 15, 2023, when we were hosting the first meeting for national security, Mr. Xi Jinping proposed a holistic national security view. We stress we need to we need to get the new trends, new characteristics of national security. We need to have a unique path with Chinese characteristics. After 10 years, this new view, after so many practice, trial and error, it has been perfected. And the system rebuilt our security and to strive for a strategic and very new stage. We achieved some fruitful result from K-12 
chaos to order, from order to prosperity. It is one of the key sessions for this initiative. Just now, Mr. Xia delivered his speech over the video, and we recapped Mr. Xi's Mr. Xi's speech in terms of national security and for Hong Kong prosperity. Mr. Xia mentioned five parts, and his remarks represent central government's concern to Hong Kong, and also it represents central government's requirement for Hong Kong to push from order to prosperity. Mr. Zhao Li showed his commitment just now, and for the implementation, he made detailed plans. Central government's liaison office will fully support chief executive and Hong Kong government to deliver central government's wish to Hong Kong to push them into actions. And we finish the 23rd article for the basic law. It is a fruitful result, and it shows the detailed action for, of our commitment. It should be a work that should be carried out by the special administrative region. But let me give you an analogy. The thief is always looking at the hole for a door. And for some terrorists or evil forces, they are looking at the loopholes. And for these people who are looking at this hole, they made long-term and crazy stigmatization to this national security law. It made such an, a proper action to demonize it into an evil and misshaped things that kidnapped our young people's mindset. Young people were used as a tool. Central government see everything and expressed our concern. To 2019's social movement, the chaos reached its peak, and central government showed its commitment to launch national security law in Hong Kong to reshape our electoral system and to to make sure that patriotic governs Hong Kong people. We need to make a change and open a new chapter. And now we see 23rd article's best time, the most opportune time. At the beginning of this year, this is a spring that we should hold dear to because under the strong support from the central government, <laughs> Mr. John Lee and his delegation made a rapid movement and measures. We slated what we must be delivered in the past years, and we moved a heavy stone from our citizens' minds and this chapter will be remarked into history in terms of the one country, two systems. The role of a dam is to make sure there's no role, no hole, and the role of the law is also to make sure everything is perfect without any flaws. And national security law in Hong Kong and Safeguarding National Security Commission Committee. We have two laws and two mechanisms. These are two cornerstones. Hong Kong's national security laws implementation is to promoting Hong Kong from chaos to order. That's a tipping point. And to safeguard national security laws implementation, it is a leading role it signify, it's a signature signifying law and order Hong Kong moved into a highly effective new stage. And it signifies Hong Kong safeguarding national security and 
legitimate rights and interests, showed our commitment and unity. From now on, two law, two systems will play, give full play to central governments and Hong Kong government's double lock. It will become a founding principle. It's not hard to set up a law, and interpreting the law correctly is not easy either. Hong Kong is at the starting point of from order to prosperity. Implementing two laws and two mechanisms involves even more works and more discussions. I'd like to share my humble views. First, to implement two law, two mechanisms, we must unswervingly hold dear to one country, two systems. Forty years ago, the China-UK joint declaration signed, and for Hong British government, the last governor, Chris Patton, set up a lot of mines under the ground. Central government is really concerned and also very patient to the commitment of one country, two systems. President Xi even promised that he would correctly, unswervingly, and continuously to hold dear to one country, two systems. We will make sure it will be steady, consistent, and not misshaped. Until now, the long-term one country and two system is a social consensus. Common law is still in place. Three centers are still important. Playing horses and playing stocks are equally important, and Oriental Pearl is still romantic. If we have to say there is something changed, that is, we have filled the loopholes in systems and laws, and our improvement and development room are broadened, it eased our mind, and it strengthened our cultural confidence. Two, laws, two mechanisms. It's coming from one country, two systems, and it's the best practice of one country, two systems. Implementing two laws, two mechanisms, can we strengthen the one country, two system, and to develop a better and better direction? And second, implement two laws, two mechanisms, we must coordinate high quality development. Development and security are like two wings of a bird, the wheels of car. Two, they are the guarding rules for two laws and two mechanisms. After its formulation, external evil forces will not stop. They must demonize or take any action for the people who would like to stir the society. They will, of course, um, tell us or do something. We have to correct our past wrong thinking. We must realize Hong Kong is very committed, so we need to understand, we need to use the system so that we can have a light start, making sure that we can do a better job making uh, benefiting our public. We have to make sure that we can guarantee the one nation, two systems, and one nation, two mechanisms under such policy so that we can have our deep understanding and uh, in-depth understanding of the local and our, our local culture to push forward um, the good energies of the region, making sure that we can have good development in the future. So we can have a better development in the future for, this, for the prosperous, prosperity. Thirdly, in order to 
make sure that we conduct things under such policy and the mechanisms. We have to implement and strength the original and clear source, strengthening this national consciousness and national feelings of Hong Kong to maintain this capitalist system unchanged. Maintain the Western colonial uh, epidemic, uh, colonial colonization, is uh, to maintain the Western colonial colonization to strengthen the foundation, the foundation of the country, and to understand the Chinese culture and the Western culture. So some of the uh, Western powers, they think they think bad of Hong Kong and to sad untruthful things on s and bad things about Hong Kong like those who with no discipline no bottom line so we cannot focus only on we should not consider this as a neighborhood issue we should fight together and cooperate so that we can we can make sure that people understand we are on the same boat. We can enhance such one nature, two systems, two mechanisms, so that we can write the new sentence under the uh, uh, Shizu Mountain here in Hong Kong. We should make sure that we have grasped opportunities for a bright future in Hong Kong. At the current moment, our global economy has facing unprecedented challenges. So how to face and cope with such challenges is uh, critical for us. It reviews our real talents and power. We should see the good things in the bad things to see to be pessimistic among all the uh, pers uh, all the uh, people with this uh, gloomy view of the future Hong Kong has never seen a good bad a good development like nowadays China is the uh, leading power of the economic economic growing of the region as a contributor to the global to the region we are a part of this region we welcome hong kong's further development and uh, for the development the further development and uh, in participating in global uh, growth so some of the criticisms has uttered random things trying to isolate the islands of Hong Kong and they send bad things about the economic uh, power so we should review the real things the truth of the local and those people who would like to jeopardize the local region would not walk away freely and next point is that we would like to enhance our inside government regulations we would like to give the local region uh, and independent uh, rights to control and regulate the local region and we would like to give good support for the local government to make sure that Hong Kong Star is the sole and only leading government of the local region conduct its uh, policies as regularly as before so we have 98.6 percent of the support of once the policy is issued so we have all 100 percent votes within the within the government for such policy so it's further reviewed the managing team has done a brilliant job. After this fight, people from all walks of life has built and enhanced its 
has enhanced its confidence in the local government. So we have full confidence that under the leading of Mr. Li, the executive director of Hong Kong, uh, uh, Hong Kong Star, we can further develop the policies and uh, all the bureaus would cooperate and work together, take it as their responsibilities to make sure the one a uh, two policies, two mechanisms with further uh, two systems, two mechanisms with further developed. And we would uh, push forward the full development of the one nation, two systems uh, to a next level and to have a um, prosperous and continuous, de continuous development of Hong Kong. Ladies and gentlemen, so we are, the, f the work is never finished. We would like to, as I would, on behalf of my bureau, I would like to, I would like to say that I would like to further help and support Hong Kong from controlled to further developed. Thank you very much. Thank you for a wonderful speech. Please be seated. Now let's invite Now let's invite the Dong Jingwei, Director of Office of the Central People's Government in the Hong Kong Special Administration Administra Administrative Region for Safeguarding National Security to leave her speech. Dear Li Chao, dear Mr. Xia, Mr. Dong, friends and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am honored to be here to participate in this opening ceremony of National Security Education Day. So we would like to and I would like to thank all the supporters for those who support Hong Kong's security and safety. And all the Hong Kong, we would like to send a warm, warmest of regards. This year, it's the tenth year after Mr. C has mentioned about the national security uh, strategy. It has real practical meaning. Just now, Mr. Xia has delivered a very in-depth speech of the explanation, interpretation of the policy and review the uh, importance of such policy for the local uh, region. And he has actually pointed the future direction for us to conduct our businesses. And his speech is very, very uh, motivated. Th I thank him for the speech. As the uh, very critical guidance under this regulation, it's our one critical part uh, for our national strategy and policies. It's for our Chinese people to protect our safety and security. And it combines the overall wisdoms from all walks of life. We have the responsibility and we are one nation. Even though we have two mechanisms, no matter it's Western or Chinese, the national security is the top, the top issue on the list. The critical mission is to first to protect our security of the nation. Their overall strategies shall be further developed because of the ongoing challenges and changes. And this will definitely guide the Chinese people 
to further protect our region and country. And here I'd like to share with you four of my thoughts. First, the overall viewpoints of the global, of the national security has reviewed critical importance. We have two mechanisms under one nation. The central government has its leading role in the local government will have limited responsibilities for the region. So we will like to fight against the chaos and for the separations of the country and the regions. We have actually reviewed that we can fight against those damages or challenges. We will like to set further and enhance more regulations in this area. Our principle has been fully conducted. After three, for these past three years, we are changing the Hong Kong society from chaos into stable development. We have actually sh sh shaken um, the bad influences of the previous chaos three years ago, from three years ago. And our national security level has leveled, uh, leveled up greatly. We would, and we have actually generated a public opinion and uh, realization of the importance of the policy. Because of this understanding and education, we have better understand of the local region so we can further develop ourselves. Secondly, we have the continuous tense, Prison, not past tense, past perfect tense in this issue. So it's an ongoing process. Well, our job has never finished. We have faced multiple challenges and different circumstances. New order has not set yet. So the old and new has come into a critical point. It's a tipping point for us to, to face those challenges. There will be some of the issues that we cannot previously foresee. From national development, Hong Kong's destiny is closely related to China's destiny as the super connector between mainland China and international world. It's very important for Hong Kong to promote the dual circulation between mainland China and international market. Hong Kong is highly sensitive and needs to make sure we're super secure. For Hong Kong itself, we use the economy to strive for development. We're at a focal point where we need to unite people together. While we develop, we need security, law and order, and social stability. Hong Kong safeguarding security will make long time effect, and we need to keep doing it. Thirdly, Hong Kong realizing from order to prosperity, long term development, we need to have national security and guarantee from a top level to secure our security, the deployment itself emphasizes our thinking to prevent potential risks. Hong Kong has a very focal principle to provide safety and accelerates the national security overall. I believe the National Security Committee in the SAR government will play out its role
for coordinating, and the whole governance structure emphasizes more on law and order, technology empowerment, basic thinking, and it will perfect Hong Kong's basic governance. And we also put overall security at a more prominent stage. We need to guarantee national people's safety, and we need to adhere to organically combine points together to consider deeper into risks to build a stronger wall. High quality safety will empower high quality development and openness. If we can coordinate these, for example, traditional safety and non-traditional safety and coordinate national security and construct national security under this new landscape and committee committed to the national security, it will show Hong Kong's commitment to the world. Fourth, safeguarding security is a must, a prerequisite for the country's development. We need to do it in a law and order manner, in a legitimate and legal manner. Last month, we finished 23rd article of basic law. We revised it, and we established national security law. We learned from the latest law of common law cities or countries. We respect human rights and integrate them into Hong Kong's law. It shows the Hong Kong government's decision to fill the loopholes in laws. Hong Kong's local laws is improved. This is a landmark for national security. The law, the most important thing is to execute so as to guarantee its authority. The commission will together with Hong Kong government to implement Hong Kong's national security and national security laws to move forward and lawfully prevent and govern and punish anyone that may hurt national security. We have law in place. We will use law to face any uncertainty and difficulty. It will contribute to the stability and long-term development of long-term uh, the one country, two system. Dear friends, in pushing the Chinese modernization and human civilization development, Hong Kong has its role to play. We have, for, we have gone a long way. So we need to improve the status. It's everyone's duty. We need to do our best. At this new point, we need to strengthen and reinforce Hong Kong's high quality development, enhance our rules, roots, and to shoulder the historic tasks and co-write Chinese people's life and to share the fruit of a great country. Thank you, Mr. Dong. Please be seated. Next, we kindly invite Mr. Li Wenxing, actor, acting commissioner of the Office of the Commissioner of the Foreign, Foreign Affairs Minister of PRC in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region to deliver his speech. Welcome, Mr. Li. Distinguished Mr. Xia. Mr. Zhang Li, Mr. Zheng Yanxiong, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's an honor for me to be here. This year marks the 10th anniversary after Mr. Xi proposed a holistic approach 
to national security. After so many years, we made breakthrough and achieved results in terms of national security. And this is a very significant moment on behalf of Commissioner of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of PRC in Hong Kong, I'd like to say congratulations to the commencement of this event. Just now, Mr. Xia congratulated Mr. Zhang Li and his delegation's um, action or work on national security. And Mr. Xia also proposed his wish and requirements to all parties. And he delivered and showed his concerns to all the parties in Hong Kong. He also showed his confidence in Hong Kong's development from order to prosperity. At this moment, it's not a peaceful time. We can see a lot of chaos and disorder. We are facing more serious tasks for such a challenging era. China proposed inclusive economy, globalization, and equality. It will pave a role and give a direction to the world peace and stability. China's foreign minister in terms of safeguarding ourselves and promoting international peace and perfecting global peace and stability, the minister would like to build a peaceful world. We made our commitment and contribution to safeguard our interest and long-term prosperity. That's a must. And also our honor task to do that for our committee. We'd like to carry out Mr. C's thought and to prevent international forces to interfere in Hong Kong's affairs. We insist foreign affairs to benefit Hong Kong. We would like to open up Hong Kong more to the international arena. We insist foreign affairs will contribute to Hong Kong people and everyone. We like to make sure Hong Kong people will benefit from Ch mainland China's glory. Mr. Xi pointed out one country, two system is the key cornerstone. So is law and order. We revised national security law and further strengthened the legal law. And it is the root for Hong Kong's development and in terms of economy, social welfare. And we believe with China as a forcing support, we believe Hong Kong will realize new high quality openness and development to push forward Hong Kong from order to prosperity. In terms of China's national security, Hong Kong can absolutely contribute its part to show the world how great our country is as the Oriental Harb. Thank you so much, Mr. Li, for your speech. Please take your seat. Now, let's welcome Mr. Li. He is from the Chinese garrison of the People's Liberation Army. Welcome, Mr. Wong. Dear Mr. Wang Xia, dear Mr. Zhang Li, Mr. Zheng, good morning. First of all, on behalf of People's Liberation Army Hong Kong Garrison, all the generals, I'd like to congratulate on the commencement of this event. This year, is the 75th year of the foundation of People's Republic of China. And it's also the 10th anniversary after Mr. Xi's proposal of national security. 
last month, we witnessed a historic moment. Hong Kong's safeguarding national security was approved unanimously at LASHCO. After so many years, the 23rd Article of Basic Law is finally completed or revised. Under one country, two system, it has a landmark meaning. National security is the top priority. So far, at this time, national, you see the escalated geopolitical tensions, and we are seeing wars that made people homeless. Terrorist attacks made so many people lose their lives. Peace and security become something that are really precious to our national development interests and rights to maintain the long-term stability. With the support of the central government, SAR government unswervingly adhere to security, national security, from chaos to order, from order to prosperity. Some netizens said, we are not living in a peaceful era. We are happy to live in a peaceful country. When you look globally, here is really peaceful. China has become the most one of the most safe country in the world. The basic reason is because the strong leadership under Mr. Xi, and we have a scientific approach of governance. We are happy, and it's our benefit to live under such a benefit of such a peaceful place and arena. It's also our duty for PLA. We unswervingly adhere to the new tasks and responsibilities. We are not afraid of strong enemies, and we hold dear to our borders. We always go to the front lines to protect our people's lives. We also go out to other countries to show our strengths. People's Liberation Army, after coming to Hong Kong, we always remember our responsibilities, and we know our duty is to protect the Oriental Pearl. So many soldiers, they spent their life here at their young age, just as a song that goes I here support Hong Kong. I love Hong Kong. I love this place. You see the Bohemia flowers. It symbolizes the future under the Chinese modernization to push the national rejuvenation. And also at a time when Hong Kong going from chaos to order, from order to prosperity, Hong Kong garrison will unswervingly to implement what is what is deployed or given by the national central government. We will use a more adopt, more effective approach to protect long-term stability in Hong Kong. We will work together with every part in Hong Kong society to co-create a national um, security environment. And we'd like to become the trusted soldier for this region. And in promoting one country, two systems, we'd like to make huger contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you General Wan. Please be seated. He is our uh, duties, and we should start with education. In September last year, the various bureau, including DOJ, SB, and EDB, had launched over five months of the territory-wide inter-school national security knowledge competition. Over 100,000 students participated in the context and after very fierce competition now we have the champion first and second winners up and 75 winners um, participated in the first ever national security education visiting tour to 
Beijing, Shanghai, and Hangzhou in the seven days they personally experience the importance of national security in different arena and understand the mechanism um, of the national security and also Chinese culture, history, and the latest development and achievement of the nation. And so they have enhancing their identification and also pride of being Chinese. So let's invite these delegates. We are the one for participating in the Inter-School National Security Knowledge Competition. I, I am the principal of the Hong Kong uh, Towers Union and Hin Memory Secretary School. I would like to know why did you participate in the contest? I was interested in participating in the contest because I felt that national security was very important during the time of pandemic and during the months of context, we did a lot of research. We also learned teamwork. And we were able to strengthen our understanding of national security. And we have learned a lot. We need to have national security in order to have Hong Kong security. So being part of Hong Kong, so, I'm very delighted to have the opportunity to participate in this competition. So, for this team has actually paid a visit to a lot of places, and they have special experiences. Which one of them do you think is most impressive? Let me go first. Uh, okay. So I have in the historical museums, I have watched these videos about the history. And there's one of the story that I cannot forget. It's one of the, uh, there's uh, all of the, uh, the soldiers and a lot of them fighting on the battlefield, uh, men leading uh, blood and um, they're supporting each other. I couldn't imagine what kind of like visions or idea they have so they can face challenges of the death, so they can fight for the freedom, liberation of the liberty of the country. So they have contributed a lot and sacrificed. Uh, as of their generations, I have uh, my utmost uh, respect for them and uh, feel pr uh, appreciated them. The Long March uh, documentary, I find it very memorable. I was attracted by the beautiful scene of the, uh, our nation. I was deeply attracted and I'm so proud of becoming one of the 1.4 billion. I feel like uh, also impressed. Um, especially for by the chairman Mao standing on the, um, at the podium and for him to, to uh, broadcast this uh, build up of the nation. So I was actually impressed and I feel honored with the 50 years of further development of our China, our country. This is a whole lot of efforts. Everyone has contributed to make it happen. So we should really um, become patriotists to contribute our efforts to make our country a better place. I was watching the flag raising. Uh, I worked the rise of the sun, and it was so grand when I saw the military came out from Tiananmen onto the plaza, and all the Chinese from up the there watching were singing the national anthem, and my. I couldn't hold my tears. I really felt what it meant to be part of the being Chinese and being PLC and our union and our struggle, in fact, is very respectful. And I felt that at the flag rising, it really gave us 
a sense of being part Chinese and being part of, of the Chinese nation. So we have to experience this in person because it's something that we cannot express on paper. Let us find our path with unique development and to realize um, national rejuvenation. So you have very deep impression of, go, of being in Beijing, how about in other places? In fact, I find it very memorable when I and when we uh, participated in the this tour of Shanghai's the commercial uh, aircraft design research center when we saw the various Ever aircraft uh, designed built by China, I really felt very touched and have an understanding of the development. Hangzhou, I actually I feel very very impressed because I realized the importance of protecting our environment. Uh, Mr. C has once said that our green mountains are actually gold mountains. It's uh, indicating the economy value of this. This is our generation's uh, mission to protect our environment, to leave it to the next generations, to push forward our cultures and remember our history. So in, in terms of the uh, pushing to the next generation, it's our responsibility for each one of the generation to protect our con country's security. So classmates, what's your view in national security? Of course, I have um, some of the feelings because in Beijing uh, University is Xi'an Dashi University because we are at the same age and uh, those students, they have their clear visions and goals for their future. They would like to contribute for the development of the country. The development of our country is never uh, for one generation's contribution. It's like several generations co-arted corporations together. So our youth, if our power for the country is powerful. So this nowadays, our generations Let's take the responsibility and mission to for their uh, to contribute to the development of our China. Uh, I feel I feel in depth deeply the central government's support for our Hong Kong government and for us to provide such opportunities to visit. And the world is in a very chaos uh, status. However, our mainland China is in a very stable status. So we are born in, we were born in a very peaceful generation and uh, era. So we have no other uh, obligation. We have no, we should not bear any obligations to contribute further. I s I s no. Especially since we receive um, the reception of a uh, deputy director, Ms. Leung, I've, it was a great encouragement to the students so, to make safeguard national security require uh, the shouldering of the U. So together, we maintain national security and we safeguard the prosperity of Hong Kong. And we sincerely thank the Saar government and also the uh, central government's uh, liaison's office for sponsoring the tour and give us an opportunity to express our um, feelings and also um, impression. Thank you, uh, classmates, for your speech and to share your feelings with with us. And we'd like to share our uh, photo albums and also our articles to you. So let's invite um, our chief executive, Mr. Li Xia Chao, and also our uh, Mr. Zheng Yanxiong. And please be, uh, please come to the stage. Let's welcome them. Mr. Zheng is the director of China United Federation of Trade Unions. Let's see forward, look forward, and let's take a photo together. Please take at the, please look at the photographer. Thank you. 
three, two, one. Thank you. Please stay on the stage. So for this, uh, for this event, we also have Pilmerage, Pilmer, uh, for students from Pilmerage schools. Let's invite them on the stage. The primary, they're from the primary school of Hong Kong. Please stand over here. Let's invite all the dear guests to come on the stage, including to come on the stage to take a fiddle. Like Mr. Dong, Mr. Wang, please come to the stage. The teachers and students of representatives, good representatives of uh, Hong Kong version, they are the uh, role models of uh, all the other schools and students. And uh, we realize that this is uh, all together. Everyone is participated, should be participating in this and so, so that we can protect the national security. Let's look at the uh, photographer and take a uh, photo together. So the front line, uh, the students from the uh, standing on the front line, please uh, make room for the people standing behind. Three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you, guests. Please be seated. Dear guests, please be seated. We also have different flat raising ceremonies in different bureaus of the disciplinary forces and also in uh, territory. Right, also the uh, government bureaus and department have different activities to promote um, national security. So here's a short video to
to safeguard national security is the duty of everyone. Oh, my. I believe each of you and also the primary school, you can feel their support for national security to raise citizens' awareness of national se security. Next, let's invite officiating guests to the stage to host the launching event for 2024 National Security Education Day. First, Mr. Zhang Li, Mr. Zheng Yanxiong, Mr. Dong Jingwei, Mr. Li Yongsheng, Mr. Wang Xiaobing, Welcome. Please put your hand on the kick off ceremony stands. Please look at the cameraman first. Let's take a photo. Let's count down from three. And after that, please press the stand. Three, two, one. Press. Hong Kong Special Administrative Region 2024 National Security Education Day commences. Please look at the cameraman in front and let's take a photo. Thank you, all the officiating guests. Please go back to your seats. Yeah, please be seated. Thank you. And once again, a big round of applause to our officiating guests. Now, we have keynote lecture for 2024 National Security Education Day. It will be facilitated by DOJ Head, and we have other guests to tell us more about the national security education, including Mr. Zhang Yong, Deputy Director of the Hong Kong and Macau Basic Law Committee of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, and the Deputy Director, and all the representatives from the industry. It's a very important event, and hope you will enjoy it. Do not miss this valuable opportunity.